What's going on, everybody? It's your community manager over at Player First Games. All opinions and topics in this video will be from me, myself, and I on my own. I greatly appreciate you guys watching. Uh, thank you so much. And today, I'm going to be talking about whiff punishing, aka recovery. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically when your opponent misses a move and you're able to hit them after that because they are unable to act immediately after missing that move. I'm sure you guys have heard me talk about it in a lot of the videos on the channel, but I want to I want today to go over why it's strong, the weaknesses of it, and why it doesn't necessarily over centralize or become the absolute best strategy in a fighting game, including multiverses. So I'm gonna break this down for you guys. Hopefully you enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Let's get into it. See, the thing is, like when you tell people to whiff punish, they start to think like, okay, so I guess the name of the game is only whiff punish. So because of that. I don't have to do anything else. Further from the truth. Let's begin. Further from the truth at all. Because, to be honest, uh, when it comes down to it, you need to make your opponent reactive to what you want to do so they perform an option that you can punish. See, it's like right here in, uh, in neutral. He's trying to be aggressive by doing that down attack, right? But then I try to jump in and hit him, and he bears me in my face. Therefore, yeah, sure, with punish. But guess what? If you're not quick enough, you're getting hit, which then opens the ability for your opponent to put you in a bad spot. And now I'm still in a bad spot, still taking damage and still trying to get out of it, right? We don't just reset to neutral immediately. Now we're back in neutral, right? But he shot the rockets. I went in to just punish him. He parried it. Now I'm taking a shit ton of damage. So yeah, the name of the game, sure, whiff punish. But when you do things to make your opponent react and think they have a chance to hit you, that's when you start to see the game open up. You know what I mean? I right there. I, I don't know how he like died like that. <laughs> I just think he messed up. But yeah. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Like right now, I tried to press my advantage with that dash attack. Guess what? I didn't get it and I got punished for it. Just parried me again, I die because I think I can be aggressive because he made me think I can be aggressive. Know what I mean? So yeah, you, you could like with punishing is very important, but it is not the central principle of the game because people, aka humans are prone to making mistakes making mistimings and making misjudgments. Like right now we're trying to hit each other, right? First person to actually capitalize on that missed move or parry in that regard is going to get rewarded. If you're missing parries, you're either probably doing directional air dodges, which don't give you a parry or you're timing. You're not timing well enough to get the parry. Nice. I tried to hit his landing. I missed. I got punished for it, but you know, I decided to be aggressive there because I felt like I could hit him. And for that, I don't get rewarded because I messed up. Which is like the common principle of fighting games altogether, you know? Because if that's the point, you can look at any game, right? Why interact with each other? Why ever fight? Why, why ever be the first person to make the first move? Why? Because if you got the accurate read or the jump on your opponent, you get rewarded for it in damage and positioning. Which puts you closer to actually winning the match, right? Put the sword down. That's why the idea of go second is the best. It's not true, yeah. necessarily. Especially when you can be manipulated in a way to go first. Because you think you'll have the ability to go second. I hope this is making sense and helpful to you guys, by the way. Like right there, I read that dodge, right? Didn't get my full punish, but I caught him here. I missed because I didn't get my second cut. Ah, oh, my second side attack. Ah. As Arya, that means a lot because of her weight, right? Like, all this damage is terrible. Like, if I reel in and he actually did uh, a different move, I could have just died, you know? But he made mistakes. I made mistakes. Whoever makes the least mistakes wins. But if you want to try to play perfect and wait around all day, I'm going to try to make you feel like you can have an opportunity to hit me. So then I force you to miss. So I get my opening. Look, look at all this damage I'm taking. Just just because I thought, yo, let me try to go for this uh, down air. There, I wanted to try to punish his landing. I messed up. I got hit. Fighting games. Dead. 
Yeah, no problem, bro. Like, after he does that move, notice how he rolls and I keep waiting for it so I can punish him. Right? Now, if he stops doing that, that creates a situation where I either have to react to that or I miss because I'm going for what I believe he's going to do. And that might open me up to getting punished. Right? So it's not just whiff punish, whiff punish, whiff punish. You gotta think about, like, the amount of mind games and things you have to think about in a match. Because a person that just sits around and whiff punishes all day is gonna find success against players that's neutral, in my opinion, is not up to snuff to deal with that kind of play style. Because there are holes in doing that as well. Especially when they're losing. Because most players that play like that they only know how to play with a lead. So if you put them in a situation where they're down and you force them to come to you because of the timer, well, you got a problem. But that's my opinion on like the strengths of whip punishing. It's strong, but it's not this universal thing, you know what I'm saying? Like that it's the only way, it's the only thing that's gonna get you rewarded. Not even just playing this game, just fighting games in general.